Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Bob Dylan Deep Dive. And yes, I'm sure there are some of you who have not been religiously keeping up with the series. For that, I don't blame you. There are a lot of episodes, but if you want to catch up, they're all on the channel. Um, and maybe you've come back for this one because, yes, it is a massive album. Blood on the Tracks from 1975. I have so much to say about this album, so I'm going to skip the pleasantries almost entirely and get right into it because I've this is probably my fourth listen of this album ever, I think. And yeah, let's get into it. This is often considered Bob's 70s peak. Well, let's say his post 60s peak. And I have to agree, it is a breakup album in every sense and one of the most deeply personal albums ever released which is something especially surprising and refreshing coming from someone like Bob Dylan, who, as I have noted throughout the series, is extremely cryptic and never really gave as much as he gives emotionally as on this album. Of course, we open on Tangled Up in Blue, which is just absolutely incredible. One of Bob's most zany vocal performances accompanies some of his most compelling lyrics ever. And the backing band is sort of soft and rocking at the same time, which keeps the momentum going to great effect. Um, it has some incredible lines that I could point out so many of them, but my favourites uh, would be, and every one of them words rang true and glowed like burning coal, pouring off of every page like it was written in my soul, which is <laughs> just incredible. Um you know, and I feel like a lot of people feel that way about Dylan's lyrics. So him saying that about something that he's seen as well rings rings particularly true. Um, just a truly perfect song about change and loss, um, which also just slaps. <laughs> it's really catchy and easy to re-listen to over and over and over again. Um, second song is Simple Twist of Fate. Uh, which is a pretty interesting structure to the verses where he almost sort of speaks most of the lines rather than sings them with the penultimate line of each verse having emphasis drawn towards it through Dylan's sort of passionate bellowing of those lines. It creates this sort of unique atmosphere to the song and Melly's pretty pleasant, really soft arrangement. Um, it's a pretty easy listen whilst also being ripe for unpacking lyrically as well. Um, it's not one of my very favourites, but I think that just speaks to the quality of the entire album. It's still going to be a 9 out of 10 song, but it's going to be near the bottom of my ranking. Um, You're a Big Girl Now follows, which has got to be one of the most pleasant arrangements on the album, um, whilst also being one of the most desperately emotional songs on the album. And it definitely grew on me this time around. It, I just sort of got lost in it, listening to it to the point where I didn't really have many notes other than this song is really awesome. And uh, yeah, probably would have been one of my least favourites before, but it's one of the ones that's really grown on me. And uh, this sort of first side is just really emotionally devastating all the way through. Idiot Wind comes next, which initially seems like a stark contrast to your to the devastating You're a Big Girl Now, but it slowly becomes uh, this sort of really powerful song. Um, you know, that you have You're a Big Girl Now is sort of the, this pitiful false hope and pining for lost time. Um, and this one is sort of the other side to a breakup where Dylan is filled with bitterness and spite. Um, you got one day you'll be in the ditch, flies buzzing around your eyes, blood on your saddle, which is <laughs> it's just brutal. And of course, yeah, you're an idiot, babe. It's a wonder you still know how to breathe, which is one of the most iconic lines on the entire album. There is a real triumphant feeling to the arrangement, which already echoes sort of the Highway 61 revisited arrangements. It actually reminds me a lot of Positively Fourth Street in the sense that it has this sort of bitter resentment running through it, but also this really epic scope to the arrangement and, and the song itself. But what makes the song even better is the cap to the entire song, this defeated, it makes me feel so sorry at the end of the last verse before going into another chorus just as the bitterness was rising to a boiling point and it just flips and he concedes that he was just as much of an idiot as his ex and, you know, it is an at first sort of funny and anthemic song, which then by the end becomes deeply powerful and is a true masterpiece. It is just a song that gets better with every listen and better the more you analyse it, which, 
yeah, another one that, that I liked even more this time around and is now one of my very favourites on the album. Following that comes my favourite song on the album and one of my favourite Dylan songs in general. Every single line of the song is purposeful and perfect and the melody is one of Dylan's most immediate and affecting. Of course, I'm talking about You're Gonna Make Me Lonesome When You Go. Situations have ended sad, relationships have all been bad. One of the most simple yet devastatingly emotional lines in his entire discography only made more powerful by the fact that it's coming from Dylan and how nonchalantly he delivers the lines as well. It's just, it's incredible. It's by far the shortest song on the album, uh, but packs just as much of a punch, if not more of a punch than any other song on the album. It's pure, concise and subdued genius to me. Um, then you get side two open and meet me in the morning, which to me is the weakest song on the album, even if it's still great. It's got a pretty cool sort of rural America sounding bluesy bounce but I think the lyrics are probably the least engaging on the album. Um, and then, you know, it's usually that one and the next song, Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts, which are considered the weakest. But I've never been of that opinion of, of the, the latter song. It's so entertaining. It's really long, uh, but it is a welcome break from the heavy lyrical topics before that would eventually return with the next song. It's one of my favourite Dylan vocal performances as well. It's so charismatic. And, you know, maybe it's not something I'm always in the mood for, but when I am, it is essential, Dylan. Um, and then yeah If You See Us Say Hello was one of the most immediate songs for me the delicate acoustic instrumentation and the direct address to the listener makes this one of the most intimate songs on an already impossibly intimate album um, you know the first verse you get she might think that I've forgotten her don't tell her it isn't so is another in a succession of crushing and brutally real lines on the album but you know, I talk a lot about how personal and raw the album is, but I wouldn't call it like a downer listen or depressing. There's plenty of musical variety and memorable moments that keep it from being repetitive and depressing. So, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about that. It's not like an Elliott Smith album where if you're not already feeling sad, you're probably not going to enjoy it. It, it can be enjoyed by pretty much everybody, I think. Um, Shout from the Storm is one of the most beloved songs on the album and isn't one of my very favourites. Maybe it used to be. I'm a little bit tired of it, but it's still brilliant. The idea of a lover providing respite from the horrible parts of life is a touching sentiment, even more so when you're relating to this relationship in the past tense. Um, so yeah, Shout From The Storm is, uh, is pretty great. And then The Beautiful Buckets Of Rain is another song I've always liked more than the consensus, it seems, is the perfect statement to end the album on. It feels like a throwback to his early career musically, which is really cool. Um, I really like the third verse, especially when he's listening to what he likes about someone before ending it on everything about you is bringing me misery. <laughs> it's like very subversive. Um, and then the final verse is the perfect end to the album. Just a glorious, a glorious note to end on with this, you know, rhetorical question, essentially, because you as a listener kind of know that he isn't going to speak to this lover again. And if you couldn't tell already, this is now I love. And every time I hear it, I love it even more. Um, I think it is a lyrical masterpiece, probably Bob's best lyrical album. Blonde and Blonde is up there too, but I think I would give I would give this the cake. Um, it is a complete artistic statement without ever dipping in quality, which means it has to be a 10 out of 10, finally committing to giving it that score. Um, as you can see here, my track ratings, as I mentioned, Meet Me in the Morning is my least favourite, and then five songs of the 10 get the perfect score. Uh, being If You See Us Say Hello, Buckets of Rain, Idiot Wind, Tangled Up in Blue, and my favourite song on the album, You're Gonna Make Me Lonesome When You Go. Which just leaves the formality of placing it within the ranking. We are 15 albums deep, and Blood on the Tracks is going to go in at number two behind Blonde on Blonde, which is where I thought it was going to go, but I didn't expect the 10 out of 10 rating, so that's really cool. Um, and Highway 61 Revisited, of course, rounding out the top three. Um, let me know what you think of Blood on the Tracks. I know it is a lot of people's favourite Bob Dylan album. Um, I think most people would have it in the top four at the very least. And uh, yeah, uh, next up is going to be The Basement Tapes, which is going to be very interesting. It's an album I've not heard in years, but I have heard it, and I'm quite familiar with a few of the songs. Um, not as familiar as with this album, but it should be an interesting, interesting revisit. And um, we'll be sticking in 1975 for that one, of course. Um, yeah, comment below your list so far, your favourite songs on this album, your favourite lyrics. I would love to hear your favourite lines on this album. Um, that's that that's going to be the aim for these comments. I want to see people's favourite lyrics from this album because I think there are so many to choose from. I listed like five different ones just in this short video. So 
Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will catch you soon.